is having a beautiful week so far. Had a great week. Oh, look at how beautiful y'all look. We're piling on. I'm gonna look at your beautiful faces. We're gonna get started in a second. I'm just gonna give it one more minute. Hmm. Look at you, look at you. Y'all look so good. All right, we're gonna do things a little different tonight. Just so you know, maybe you'll be scared, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. You guys said you could hear me okay? Yeah? All right, I wanna see if I can do something before we get started. <laughs> well, I don't see it. All right, you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah? Good. So we are, what, is, what week is it, nine? Is that what we're on, nine? That's crazy to me. Um, it's been an amazing nine weeks, and I know last week I was really, really hard on you guys, and, and whoever watched this and whoever is going to watch this, I know I really was like laying it out there and you know, unfortunately, um, this is not an easy thing to do. Network marketing is not easy. And I think sometimes, you know, we start comparing ourselves to those that have had really great success. Um, not everybody tells the complete truth on how hard this is and how many wall kicking moments there are and how many moments there are of self doubt and insecurity. Um, even the best in this business have that at times. And, you know, my goal with this entire 90-day um, game plan, at least with these Zooms, was to completely tell the truth. And, you know, the truth in your word, like, like you've heard me say over and over, is gold. And I'm okay with it not being well received sometimes. Um, it's not going to make me change what I do because I think the truth – um, is the most important thing you can have um, when making a decision if this is really what you want. And, and when you're looking at your vision board, if you really, really um, have it in you to do this, and, and I don't mean have it in you with a skill set, I mean have it in you with um, the hard work it's going to be, not just in the business, but on you. And, you know, coming to Isogenics, I had done a lot of work on me. Like, it was my full-time job for six months. And, you know, I was unemployed at the time, which wasn't fun. It was super stressful. Talk about um, insecure and self-doubt. And, you know, I had to fight off negative chatter all the time. But for a solid six months, my full-time number one priority, even before being mom, was to really get my head right. And so I don't want you looking at me and thinking, well, Tracy went through all that stuff. You know, you've heard the stories and, and what I've been through. And if she can just do it, why, why am I struggling with it? And, and the fact is, is I not only did lots of work before I started, every single day since I have started, I continuously and continually, consistently grow me. Um, I'm always learning. I am always learning about myself. I'm always learning about network marketing. I, I was not um, a professional at this before. Um, you know, so there's, there's a lot of moving parts in this thing. And, and sometimes we see the highlight reels on Facebook of other people or you're following a leader that you, that you connect with or you respect. And that's awesome. 
but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you're not being told. Not that they're not telling the truth. It's just, I mean, if I sat and told you everything that I do day in and day out, um, we wouldn't have time to talk to people about isogenics. Let's be real. So, you know, I just kind of wanted to start with that. Um, you know, depending on what you've been through and where your mindset is will determine how hard you're going to have to work on you. And I'm telling you right now, it's worth it. Even if this goes a little bit slower than you would care it to have it be, um, that's totally okay. Um, the, the work on you, aside from isogenics, will not only have you as a better person in the world, which Lord knows the world needs that, it will help you be a better partner in life to whoever, or if you're you know, on the lookout for one, who knows. Um, it'll help you be a better parent, um, a parent that your kids can trust and respect. Um, I don't know about you, but four years ago, my kids, uh, they loved me very much, but they didn't always trust me because I did one thing and would, I would say one thing and do another. And so this has helped me in my family life and how I deal with conflict. Um, before with conflict, I used to either cause more drama to make it end and intimidate people, or I would just cut people off and run away. So this has helped me with conflict resolution. It's helped me um, really be the person that people can trust and respect. Doesn't mean they all like me, which is okay, but I know without a doubt that I have respect and trust. So that work on you, aside from isogenics and growing your business, this will grow you in all areas of your life. And I can't even express enough how important that is. Um, even if you decide tomorrow that isogenics isn't for you, um, I want you to know that I love you and I think you're special and you have many gifts to give this world. And, you know, at the very least, keep putting this stuff in your body because it is amazing. And I've talked about it before. If, if they made me choose between the compensation plan and the products, I'd pick the products every time. And that's no BS. I hope they don't, you know, call me to the carpet and make me choose. But, um, you know, these products are amazing. Um, and, and the growth in me has been amazing. And so I know that, you know, I, I'm seeing who's on this call. And I know that there have been times that you've wanted to quit. And maybe you haven't come back. I don't know. Or maybe you've, you know, gone dark. I like to call that gone off the grid for a while. For whatever reason, life happens. Um, you know, a spouse isn't supportive. Um, you know, you're beating yourself up every day in your mind and, and you keep allowing that negative chatter to come in and, and rule the roost. Whatever that looks like for you, at any moment you can decide that enough is enough. I, I was talking to a girl who is asking for some advice and I had to be kind of hard on her, you know, and she'd said something like, well, I've done it my whole life that way. I've done this my whole life. I've done that my whole life. And I get it. 40 years, I did everything the way I used to do it. And that was my excuse when I would fail. That was my excuse when I would make people uncomfortable. That was my excuse when all my relationships would fall apart because that's just who I am. And that's what, what I've always done. And, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you're going to, back up whatever your behaviors are, whatever you do with, well, that's just how I am and that's how I've always done it. Well, I'm just going to ask you how that's working for you. Because if you're not getting what you want in your life, you're going to have to make some changes. And for somebody like me and where I was in my life, I had to change 100% of everything I did and every way that I thought and every action that I took in my life. And you want to talk about an overhaul, that is not easy. When you have 40, habit, or 40 years of habits and patterns that used to serve you at, at some capacity that all of a sudden aren't anymore and you're like, you, you feel like a newborn baby all over again and you don't even have any clue what you're doing. You just know you have to do it differently if you want something different. And so if that's you, however many decades you have under your belt and you use the excuse, well, that's how I've always been. That's just who I am. I'm a red, I'm a blue, I'm a yellow, I'm a white, who cares? I mean, your goal is to be all of it, a well-rounded human being. And, and if you're not where you're at in your life, you're going to have to really evaluate what's working and what's not. And if it's an old habit and pattern that you've had forever, and it, it may require you to change some things up. And 
holy moly, not only is that hard for you as a human being, but it is going to be very, very challenging for everybody that loves you and everybody in your life because it's like changing the rules of the game. And, you know, you're going to have to decide if it's worth it for you. If, if this is something that, um, is that is, if this is something that you really, really want and, and it's about, you know, creating a legacy for your family, you're going to have to decide if it's worth it because ruffling feathers is never fun. It's never fun. I used to enjoy it because of power and intimidation and insecurity, but that didn't serve me back in the day. That's how I used to operate. Um, you know, but changing everything about my life had a lot of people exit it because I really did change the rules like overnight on everybody. And I had to decide if where I was going was more important than who was there. Um, if, if I was going to continue on and, and at the end of the day, when I was weighing everything, you know, um, my kids and my family, my faith had to come first of, of, above and beyond everything else. And so those people had to go and they did. Um, it was hard. It was heartbreaking and it still is almost four years later. Um, and I'm just telling you the truth because a lot of times we don't hear that part of the story in network marketing. We don't hear that part of the story when we are, um, in personal growth and personal development. Um, it's the hard truth. It really, really is. And I know I'm doing you a disservice if I don't keep telling you about that, but I will tell you this. Um, if I didn't release the things in my life and the people in my life, that weren't so great for me, none of the great things I have in my life are here today. The only ones that are obligated to be in my life are my two kids. And even now, at their ages, they could, they could easily say, hey, peace out, mom, we got this on our own. Um, but everything good in my life was and is a result of me doing the hard work on myself and not wavering from that, even when people left. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that. And, and when you make room for the blessings to come in, sometimes they come in truckloads, and they did. Beautiful. Most of the people on this call didn't know me before Isogenics. Um, and I'm looking at all your beautiful faces, and some of them are my dearest friends and some of the people I love and respect most in this world. So I would, I would say, although my pain in my heart is still there for those that left, it really, really is. Um, what I got in return is well beyond worth it. And, you know, I, I think about those people still um, in a good way. I am grateful for their part in my journey in my life. Um, I know I've talked about the poem Season, Reason, Lifetime before, but if you haven't looked it up, look it up again. Um, it, it really helps you kind of deal with, you know, when the shift is happening and, and you're having to make a decision about who stays and who goes. Um, it really put things in perspective for me. So I can look back at those that left, not with pain so much anymore, but gratitude. Gratitude for what they taught me, gratitude for the lessons they brought into my life, gratitude for some of them helping me get to rock bottom really, really fast because without rock bottom, I'm not here. So I wanted to start with that because I know I was really harsh, not harsh, but hard last week. Um, I will continue to be that because the truth is important. Um, I want you to know that I believe in each and every one of you, like I said, and uh, we're going to get started um, a little deeper. So week nine, um, again, I start off every week with uh, the Eric Worre, um, 10 Habits of Really Great Leaders, and the number nine one is strategy. And I know that a lot of you probably started on these Zoom calls because you figure Tracy's going to give me the secret sauce, the strategy, how'd she do it, you know? Um, and, and quite honestly, the number one strategy I can give you if you get nothing else from anything, you, you write this down because this has to be number one in your toolbox. You ready? Consistency. Consistency. Um, that is probably the greatest strategy you could have, and it was the only one that I had when I started this. I had no idea what I, I was doing, and honestly, there are days still I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. However, I do know one thing is I am consistent and I show up every day, even if it's for five minutes, and I show up especially when I don't want to, and I show up especially when my heart is hurting, and I show up especially when I am having wall kicking moments and I think I suck at life, I show up then because it's very hard to stay stuck in that mindset when you are um, being of service to others and you're pouring love into people. 
And honestly, it's selfish. It was selfish in the beginning, but it was survival for me. And a funny thing happened with survival mode in a healthy way was instead of me isolating like I used to, when all those things would happen, when I was in pain, when I was feeling like crap about myself, when, when all those things I just said, isolation used to be the number one tool in my toolbox. When I switched it to consistency, um, not only did the, the negative chatter go away a lot quicker, um, my confidence started to build, believe it or not, even through the storms. And I saw how much it was helping other people. And at the same time, it was helping me heal. It was like a win-win. And then the next thing you know, I, um, I was attracting people that were willing to kind of work on themselves. I was attracting a stronger version of my, you know, the new stronger version of myself. The, the type of things I was attracting in my life before were um, insecure people, power-driven people, um, not so friendly people. Um, but as I was growing myself and as I was consistent, even through the dark days, and showed up even when I didn't feel like it and showed up even when I had nobody left in my life but my kids, um, the blessings started to roll in. And with that, people, when I would talk to people and, and get them started and then they would know little by little what was going on in my life, they couldn't believe that I was still showing up in my life despite all that stuff that was going on. And what that did was not only did it build um, trust, a lot of it, respect a lot of it um, but it was very relatable but super duplicatable if you're willing and it gave other people permission to do that too to know that they didn't have to be perfect to show up and do isogenics it, it let people know they didn't have to be perfect to show up and share this with people because here was this hot mess um, you know just showing up and, and loving people and and I had some success in the beginning and the more I did that and, and like I said consistency is your number one strategy and I know that many of you follow a lot of different leaders, and that's amazing. There are some great leadership out there that have so much value to give, and they, I've learned a lot from them. And, and what, what I want you to do with that is continue to do that, especially the ones that you have this heart connection with, the ones that really, like, if, if you were yourself 10 years from now, and that's how you saw yourself, like, who is that person? Um, it's okay to, to kind of get tips and stuff from them but at the end of the day you are beautiful just the way you are and you have to do this the way that works for you not the way that you always have done it but what really works and, and produces results that you want not not results that you think I want you to have but you really need to you know many of you filled this out this 90 day game plan book out and I've had some of you call me or text me or, or message me saying, I'm not getting the results I want. I'm like, well, how many conversations have you had this week? How many times have you followed up this week? How many times did you tell the isogenic story this week? And, you know, right there is usually your answer of why it's not working. And, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. I think we want to, and being really honest, I think a lot of people just want to hide behind Facebook posts and think that's enough and that's work. And it isn't. Honestly, it's not. And if you're relying on that and you're not getting the results, guess what? You need to do something different. You need to go meet new people. You need to get out of the house. You need to, you know, join a different gym or take a free workout class or hike a mountain and actually look at people or walk your dog through the neighborhood instead of just letting them out through the backyard or go to a dog park. Those are free too. And actually force yourself to get out there and talk. So much of the strategies that are out there are in regards to social media. And I'm not lying, it's, it's how I built most of my business in the beginning because I didn't have any friends left, especially locally, I had nobody. Um, but I think so often, because it is so easy to hide behind it, um, and we can put something out there that maybe isn't us, um, I think a lot of people, it, it's, it's overload at this point. And, and we're starting to look like some of those other companies that I don't love how they market. Um, I'm seeing a lot more of that sadly with isogenics because we're getting lazy we're getting lazy and so if i could give you another strategy is like uh, go talk to people not necessarily to enroll them but build relationships and you know i've got a list a fun list up on my whiteboard um and like i talked about last week that one's really hard for me 
the yellow in me is hard to tap into. I've got all the other colors nailed and nailing them, but the yellow one is really, really a challenge for me. And so what I've done, and for those of you that don't know what yellow means, that's the fun, the fun personality. Um, I can be spontaneous and fun when it comes to my kids because they're kids and I always wanted my kids to be kids. And so it's easy for me to be fun and have fun um, doing playful things when I'm with them because I want to model that for them. But in every other area of my life, that is a struggle. And I've talked about it before. I'm working on it. It's really, really hard. And some of the fun things I like to do are more things that keep me isolated, which is not good. You know, I like to be, do art. I like to rip carpet out and redo rooms, but nobody's here. So that's, although I do like doing that, I'm going to have to find activities that are fun outside my house. Not because I want to enroll them all in isogenics. In, isogenics. in fact, my goal is to do things, and I don't talk about isogenics at all. I don't want to talk about isogenics. And for some of you, you need to flip-flop that. You know, down the road, you can talk about isogenics. But because isogenics pretty much is my life 24-7 at this point, I want to do things and, and not ever talk about it. And I need to build more relationships in my life. I have so many great relationships, and all my great relationships in my life are in isogenics. Every single one of them. And so it's very hard to have a conversation with my closest friends without it coming up. And so it's time for Tracy to meet some new people. And that scares the crap out of me. But like I said before, you know, how's that working for me staying in this house all by myself? It's not. It's not. We were not meant to do this, this world alone. And, and I'm going to be really honest. I know I have a lot of love and light to give the world. So my strategy is to actually leave my home. If you are like me, some of you will have to do that. You hide behind these little zooms and, and whatever. So I challenge you to go write a fun list and, and not do it with a friend. Like all my fun lists I'm going to do. I mean, I have a few things that I might do with one or two people, but 99% of my fun list is going to be done solo. So I don't have any kind of like buffer to, that's going to really force this introvert. I know you guys look at me today and you're like, how, like you won't have a problem with that. And I'm telling you right now, I have anxiety just saying it out loud. So maybe you're like me. I don't know. Maybe you are. Um, and if you're an extrovert, bravo. I think that's awesome. But this introvert, um, when you're going into a situation solo like this, it, it's kind of freaky. I, I, that's why it's got to be something I enjoy doing. So I'm just putting that out there more for accountability. Also, to give you a little strategy with life, but, but mostly to hold myself to the carpet here. Um, so that, you know, that's another thing, um, prior to isogenics or prior to recovery, um, I was not a fan of accountability and that's why I never wrote out goals or even spoke about goals. So that's another strategy to have is to actually write out your goals and tell somebody you're going to do it because your word is gold and you know what, you'll let yourself down all day long, right? But will you let down somebody that you told you were going to do something? the chances of that are a lot less. And so when I, um, when I started isogenics and I went to that first event and I went to the person next to me and said I was going to be an isogenics millionaire, I was like, oh my gosh, I just said that out loud. Now I have to do it because I know that they're looking at me, you know, and I'm sure that's totally self-absorbed thinking and it is, but I didn't want to let her down. I made a promise and I, and I know at that point in my life, my word is gold. So there I went, there I went. So, yep. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Cubs world series game is a perfect place to meet new people. And I will be going to games three, four and five, just letting you know, but the plane ticket. So good call Don Robinson or no, it's Renee, isn't it? That's Renee. You throw me with that name all the time. Um, yeah. So that's that. So more strategy, consistency, 100%. And what does that look like? That does not mean scrolling Facebook every day. Because that's what a lot of you have considered consistent, right? Shake your head if that's true. If you have considered that being consistent. Yeah, and it's okay. Because most of us, I, you know what? I've used that as an excuse to say I'm consistent sometimes too. Um, that's only a small piece of the puzzle. You know, this involves you picking up your phone and texting or calling, you know, 
thank goodness most people will answer a text before they will a uh, call. So that kind of like gives you a little buffer. So I want each of you a little strategy I'm going to give each of you is to with every person, every contact that's in your phone that isn't in isogenics yet. All I want you to do if this feels okay for you is to say, you know what? Text these people, every single one of them, every single one that isn't blessed by isogenics yet. Um, say, you know what? You were on my heart today. I would love to just catch up. End of story. And then you see where the conversation goes. And if they say, yeah, great. If it's in person, awesome. If it's over the phone, great. If they turn you down, don't tell yourself a story in your head what that's about. If you get rejected, who cares? If they don't answer, whatever. You're going to focus on what you do have happening in front of you, not what isn't happening. Okay? And I think so often we focus on who didn't show up or who didn't respond when you have beautiful people showing up in your life every single day. What you focus on is what you will find. So if you focus on those that are there, those that are um, responding to you, those that are um, saying, oh my goodness, you just made my day. Like focus on the great things. And just because somebody doesn't respond doesn't mean it's not a great thing. Sometimes they just, you know what? Sometimes that may do is just kind of like spark something in their memory that maybe you should pay a little more attention when they post something on Facebook. You know, just something like that. But we have this text messaging thing that I don't think a lot of you are using. It's huge. You know, if you're an introvert and you're afraid to pick up the phone, in recovery we call it the 500-pound the phone because it's so hard to pick up and ask for help. Um, but in network marketing, it's like an 800,000-pound phone because, like, I don't want to be – it's like, okay, I'm just setting myself up to be rejected over and over and over again. And how fun does that sound? Yeah, not so much. But with a text message – it also will give you a little buffer zone that if they ask you a question that maybe you're not sure of the answer or you need a second to kind of pause and not get flustered, it's there. So I'm going to challenge each of you as part of your strategy, everybody that's in your phone, do that. And everybody that is in your Facebook friends list that isn't blessed by isogenics yet, do the same thing. Say, you know what? I was thinking about you today. You're on my heart. would love to catch up. That's it. That's it. And you'd be surprised how many people, it's, it's hard to be um, standoffish when somebody says, you know what, they were on my heart. Are you kidding me? If somebody said that to me, I'd be like, oh, definitely I'd be more apt to either return a text message or a phone call or a private message. I would. So that's a really good strategy if, you're, if you feel like you're stuck. Um, yes, absolutely try Facebook Messenger or use the video. Feel really brave. Let them see your, your No Makeup Monday or your messy hair. Let them know how real you are. Like seriously. Um, the messenger may, the video messenger may be a little challenging if you have a couple hundred to do. But, you know, pick 10 a day. Do 10 little, you know, 30 second videos a day. How fun would that be? You know, set that goal. I am sure I'm looking at you. I know a lot of you haven't done something like that because it's scary. And so we're going to do the scary stuff. That's another strategy. You do the scary stuff first. So I can't wait to hear how many of you have actually done this. And I am willing to bet probably 80% of you won't. And you're going to still say this network marketing thing doesn't work. And, you know, what would I say if I don't know them? That's a good question. Um, if, if you've been watching them and they post something that is exciting or, you know, it's caught your interest, say, hey, I love your posts. They lift me up so much. You know, I've done that before to people that I now have in my friends list that I don't know very well. Or, you know what, your posts inspire me. I'd love to get, you, to get to know you a little bit more. Whatever. Whatever. So that is kind of where I'm at with strategy and, and how I thought I would do this different tonight is I know that a lot of you, and I want you to raise up your hand if this is you, you feel like you're floundering through this 90 days and it's okay to be honest. The truth is, is important. Keep your hands up if that's you. Keep them up. I'm not going to call on you. Don't worry. Just keep them up though if, if you feel like you're floundering through this. All right, good. So this means we're going to have a lot of information to do. So I want you to, if you have a specific question, there is, I believe, a little hand raiser thing. You guys see that on your, on your deal? 
Yeah. Is there a way to raise your hand if you want to ask a question? I don't know if you do. Do you? No. Okay. So if you want to unmute your, oh, I see hands. Okay. So if you want to raise your hand and ask a question specific, and, and if you're going to ask a question, if you're going to um, be brave enough to do that, please try and have a question that will help everybody, not like a case specific, like this person said this, what should I say back necessarily? Let's, let's try and help the entire crowd and everybody that is going to watch this video if we can. Uh, so if you have a question, you want to unmute yourself or type your name in the chat, I can call on you. How about we do that? Type your name in the chat if uh, you want to ask a question. Or this may be a very short call. <laughs> All right. That's Nobody's got any questions. All those people that had okay, we're gonna man it. Yeah. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah, hold on. Let me mute everybody else. You may have to unmute. Janet, unmute yourself then. Okay, so um, I'm not financially linked to you at all. Um, and I appreciate all of your videos that you're allowing us to watch. Um, I watched the one last week. I can't tell you how many times I watched it before it went away. Um, but the, there was a lady on there that spoke about kind of her roadblocks and you said to her that you had written down like five things that were kind of like your holdups and that a person needed to really figure out what that was before they were allowed to move on. Cause I've spent thousands of dollars on coaching and it became like an accountability type of deal. Well, did you do these calls? Did you do that? Did you do this? Um, but nobody ever got to the root problem of why I didn't do that. And I honestly felt your heart when you said that there was a gap missing between going to these coaching um, things and then when you get home and you still have the holdups, that there's something actually really a block there that you can't get through. And before you get to that point, you can have all the know-how of how to do things, but unless you figure that out, you're always going to self-sabotage yourself. So my question is, is, um, you know, like the girl you asked her, did she know what those were? And she said, no. And you said, you're just gonna have to dig deep and figure that out. So my question is, is one, when you're trying to figure those out, you know, what are you looking for specifically to identify those issues? And then I know you said that you, you breathe for two minutes and said that feeling's only gonna last for two minutes. So you would just count that time out and just move on. So then my next question is, okay, that sounds really good in theory, <laughs> but I know that there's probably maybe a little bit more of self-development that you did, um, maybe uh, to go along with that. And if so, what is that? That's a phenomenal question. Um, thank you for asking it. Um, because that was probably a huge aha moment from what feedback I've gotten. Um, and that same beautiful girl, Shannon, is still on the call tonight. So um, um, I'm hoping it helped her a little bit too. Um, so when, when I wrote down, here's the number one thing when you're writing this down. You have to be 100% completely honest with yourself. Um, it, you know, I had to have accountability sponsors in my life because I was in recovery and, you know, this was life or death for me, to be honest with you in the, in the beginning. Um, for a lot of you, these aren't life or death issues. So you can kind of like not be completely honest about it because you're getting by in life and life's okay, right? For me, life was not okay. It was absolutely horrible and everything was falling apart. So I had to completely, you know, you've heard me take off the masks and everything. So I picked like the, the main things that were, when I would be afraid, like let's say I was afraid, which that's what's holding most of you back, I would assume, is fear. 
um, why was it sparking that fear? What was it? Was it rejection from my past? Was it, you know, family stuff that I went through? Was it, you know, relationship issues that we triggered by old habits and patterns? So this is going to, whoever's got that shuffling thing, whatever, knock it off. Um, it, 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 it forced me to go way back way, way back to some of my earliest memories. And I know you're like, dude, I just want to like be really successful in isogenics. I don't want to have to think about when I was six. And unfortunately for you, if you are having setbacks or you're holding yourself back, I guarantee you it comes from something in your childhood because we learn those habits and patterns as kids to survive, to cope. Um, before we have things like food and alcohol and all these other things, you know? And so you know, it, I had to really go back. So a lot of journaling to figure out. Um, I had to kind of get quiet and not have any noise around me and, and let my mind go to some painful moments and like think about it as, you know, let's say as six, I dealt with this it, a certain way. How am I at 44? Is that situation impacting me and how I react and my habits and patterns today? Is that really, really deep? Absolutely. Was it really, really necessary for me? You bet. And so I think a lot of people aren't willing to go that far back and do that much work. This is not going to be, Tracy gives me the homework to write down five things and guess what? I nail it in a week. I'm still working on my top five things and they still creep their ugly head up every day and I have to fight it off. But I'm willing every single day to go back and try and reprogram my mind. And it's hard and it's painful and it's worth it. And so for you, you have to look at the areas in your life that maybe, especially the ones that you want really, really bad, the ones that you want to change really bad, but even though you want it really, really bad, you still do the old things that you kick yourself in the ass for. Okay. So start there, pick one, you know, you may have five things written down, but pick the one, pick the one that is holding you back from what you want the most. And then like a, like a tiger, you just go after it and you, you dig deep as far back as you can remember where maybe those habits and patterns were influencing you as a kid. Okay. Does that make any sense? That was the first part of the question. And, and you know, the thing is, is, the problem with going back for some people is they want to stay there in that pain because it gives them an out and an excuse for their their habits and patterns. Well, that happened to me, so I'm just gonna react like this. And, and I realized some of the stuff that has happened to us as children weren't our fault. But we have to take ownership of it and reprogram ourselves from how we respond to that. It doesn't mean we stay there. I can go back and not be like bored for weeks because I'm not staying there. I'm just going back there to you know un unpack what happened let it go and then redirect my patterns and habits today. Does that help? It does. I think um, I've been really one that hasn't really thought about a lot of that. Um, you know, I just kind of, you know, have in the past prided myself on the fact that I just didn't get bogged down in the craziness that went on in my childhood. But now, you know, as an adult and as being in isogenics for five years and I haven't accomplished what I wanted to accomplish, then I know that there's got to be something that even though I'm happily suppressing it, it's not doing me any favors. It isn't. And I'll have you know, there, there has been, because I continue to do this work every day, because I, I seriously, I got a lot of crazy up in here sometimes. And you know, every day something else is to be revealed. And there are some things I'm like, holy moly, I had no idea that I suppressed that. No clue. And, you know, does it mean it's not painful? No, it is sometimes. But I don't allow myself to stay in the pain. I use that aha moment to help myself grow. And, you know, if you're not where you want to be, then you're going to have to go there because there's obviously something there. And if you're totally fine in your life, then don't do it. Um, but, but I guarantee whatever's holding you back today is a direct relation to something you suppressed or something that happened as a child or how you used to respond to situations. Uh, 
I will argue that till I'm blue in the face. That is 100% what is affecting you today. It might be your family dynamic. I know that that played a part with me too. It may be, you know, your, the way that you coped with things as a kid definitely played a part with me at 40 years old. So, you know, I wasn't willing to change it, honestly, for a long, long time, even though I knew, you know, that's just the way I am. I'm, that's just the way I am. And I wasn't willing to change it for a long, long time because, you know what, life was manageable. And I, I'm being really honest, I probably wouldn't have changed everything if my life was still manageable. But it was so unman unmanageable that I needed to, to clean house, start over, and change everything. And I realize not everybody's gonna be in that situation. So if you're writing down your, your top five things that you think they are, you may wanna dig a little bit deeper because those are probably the things that just look good on paper that if somebody found it, you would be okay if they saw. Okay, so I want you to dig even deeper than those five things because there's something else. There is, there is. Okay, did that help, Janet? Yeah, okay, Amy Turner. Unmute yourself. Hey there. Oh, so thank you again. I'm also not connected to you, but um, feel connected to you. You are a blessing to so many of us. And especially, you know, we're kind of, um, Janet and I kind of actually work together. We're all, we kind of say we're in the land of misfit toys. Um, because we don't really have that strong upper leader. And so um, that's why we are so appreciative of you and you're beautiful for that. Thank you. But one of the questions I had um, is when you're talking about like these 30 second videos, what would you make that look like? Like just asking again, like asking the questions you were saying, like, Hey, you know, my, you know, you, um, what were you saying? How did you say that? I took some notes here. For somebody like me, you know, you know, the, the key is to be yourself and have no agenda. Like that is number one. Like if, if somebody's posts have really been funny or gosh, like they've been going through a hard time or whatever that looks like, you know, I will pop a video and be like, oh my goodness, I was thinking about you today. Your posts make me laugh every morning. And if I don't find one, I go looking for it. I would love to catch up end of story. Like, it just depends on my mood. It depends on what they're posting. Um, but almost always I say, you know what, I've been watching you and your posts either make me smile, you've been on my heart and I'd love to catch up because that's natural for me. If that's not something that you would normally say, probably pick something else, but you want them to feel like you're a safe place. Like you're not trying, especially if they know you're an isogenic, that you're not trying to, you know, slam like the next sentence out of your mouth if they actually catch up with you is, oh my God, did you see I'm doing isogenics and the chocolate mint shakes coming out? And oh my God, you know, you know, this is about taking time to build a relationship and to build that trust because so much on social media is manipulative um, marketing techniques. It really, really is. And so you want to be different, especially as isogenics gets bigger and I'm seeing it done maybe not so effectively. Um, you want to be that different person and the video thing is a big, big, big way to be different because you can't just copy and paste a message to everybody if you're doing, you know, a 30 second video. Um, it will, if I see a video, I, I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Facebook messages. If I see one that has a video on it, I'm opening it always. So, um, you know, it, you're, you want to be different. So does that help you a little bit? It does. No, it absolutely does. Because I think that that's the thing that gets you caught up sometimes is that you're just not quite sure what to say or, you know, so that becomes your own self-sabotage because then you just don't end up doing it. Um, so and so, you know, just be yourself. You know, if, if you were meeting somebody on the street, okay, let's say you're just meeting somebody on the street and they had a really cute shirt on. You don't necessarily know that, but you're not going to, well, maybe you wouldn't, but I'd be like, oh my gosh, your shirt is so cute. Made me smile or like, where did you get it? You know, just natural conversation. Even if it's just a little video, you, you need to be as natural as you would be. And even as an introvert like me, if somebody, you know, makes me smile, I'm going to tell them about it no matter how introverted I am because that helps pull me out of my, myself. It really, really does. When people post something that makes me laugh that aren't in isogenics or I see somebody on the street that is, has really good manners or parenting that I see that I admire. Like I, like that pulls the introvert out of me and I just have to tell them because most people wouldn't. 
And that's how I stand out in the world when I show up in it. So. Perfect. And I am excited. I'm, I bought a ticket, a plane ticket to go from South Carolina to Chicago to see you for your raw and real. So I will see you there, girl. <laughs> awesome. It's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. Thank you, Amy. Thanks. All right. Mr. Deep, Kent. Mm -hmm. I'm just going in Hi. order. Hi, how are you tonight? I'm awesome. Good. My you? question kind of maybe ties into the first one, but it was, uh, how do you get past worrying about what other people think about you? Um, it seems to be something I am bothered by. I don't want people thinking I'm a salesman or just doing this to make money and uh, well, because that's think, not what it is. People are going to think whatever they're going to think and it isn't about you. Yeah. You know, they have their own stuff. And, and secondly, when I worried about what everybody was thinking about me, I was filled with so much anxiety that I was paralyzed most days. And I had to ask myself, how's that serving me? And quite honestly, people have their own agenda. And whatever they think about me usually fits into whatever agenda they have. And honestly, that doesn't serve me. It didn't serve my family. And, you know, I, I carry myself in the world. Not everybody is going to agree with me. Not everybody is going to necessarily like me but it is congruent to who I am and, and I'm okay with who I am. So if they don't like me, it's okay. And if they think I'm trying to sell them shakes, that's okay too. I'm not. And right. that's their way of, you know, being defensive. And, and you know what, yeah. at the end of the day, if you worry about what people think, how is that serving you? It, it, it isn't, it's holding you back from maybe blessing somebody. It's holding you back from maybe being the, the partner you want to be. Um, maybe it's, holding you back from showing up in the world, so grateful for, for life. I mean, I, when I do leave the house, I walk out so grateful to be alive that people are like, what is she on? Yeah. Because, and, and I don't care what any, because people look at me weird sometimes because of my <laughs> gratitude. Because every day is a gift. We are not guaranteed tomorrow. So why would you let what other people think dictate how you run however little time we have here on earth? It's a decision. It's a decision. And I'm telling you right now, um, when I worried about whatever everybody thought I would lie to please them, I would um, elaborate and um, overemphasize things that weren't necessarily as they were. And you know how much anxiety that causes to try and keep your story straight when you are doing a thing and operating in ways to please other people? I never have to worry about my behavior or something I said because it is exactly who I am. And so it takes that stress off of you as well. I'm not worrying about that so much. So does that help you? Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Cheryl, you there? Hi, Tracy. I'm here. I see you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for opening this tonight because there has been a question that I've been dying to ask somebody and I don't, I've never had the opportunity. But my dear friend, Kim Acker, challenged me um, to go out of my house, okay? And to go into Walmart, for example, and to smile at people and say hi. And what I ran across was that absolutely no one would meet my eye. Mm -hmm. I am so stumped and I'm not, I'm like, how do you break that barrier where they are keeping their distance and yet you're trying to reach out. What the heck do you do? You just haven't talked to the, or looked at and smiled at the right 25 people. That's all. <laughs> in Walmart probably is, honestly, I don't do a lot of smiling in Walmart either. It drives yeah. me crazy. So maybe go to a park or, or whatever. Um, you know, and I want you to know that isn't about you. It's about them. And so it's, it's just like when we talk about isogenics, let's say we've shared the story with 50 people and 49 of them said no. You're focusing on the 49 that said no and not the one that said yes. So you just haven't found the right people yet. It didn't mean that you sucked at it. It didn't mean that you did it wrong. And it doesn't mean it's about you. It's about them. And so don't stop doing it. Um, your agenda is to just smile. And, and honestly, how did you feel smiling? Whether or not they responded back to you. Didn't it feel good? It felt good, yeah. When I came home, instead of 
um, because I didn't have any luck, obviously, at Walmart. But when I came home, I ended up getting on Facebook and I reached out to some people that I hadn't spoke to and I asked them for referrals. I, I, I told them, you know, you guys have seen me posting, you've done this, you've done that, you know, and I, I just reached out and I said, look, if you guys need help, I'm here to help you. I said, but if you know anyone else that needs help, please send them my way. And that's, that's huge. That's huge. And if you let that, if you let your experience in Walmart dictate your mood, you wouldn't have done that. So, you know, like I said, you just didn't run across the right people yet and it's okay. It's okay. You keep doing it. And that's what I meant about consistency in the beginning is so many people will do a post or go smile at people or tell isogenic story and they'll get every single one says no's and so they quit. Yeah. And so, so just because you got 25 no's doesn't mean you're going to stop tomorrow. You're going to do it again and you're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep doing it because it just takes one. Right. That's, that's exactly right. right. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to tell you I'm going to my first event at ICU in November. Good. <laughs> I'm Good. looking forward to it. It's going to change your life. Thank you. Um, we taught, I saw in the chat the emotion code. I have actually read that book. It is a very good book to kind of help you tap into the stuff. So um, emotion code is really, really good. The gifts of imperfection is really, really good. Codependency no more is really, really good. Beyond codependency is really, really good. Um, so if somebody can write that down in there. So I thank you, Danielle, for um, recommending the emotion code. It's really, really good. Um, let's see. Going down, going down. Thank you for all the nice things about Ron Real. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Nobody else has a question? I just see a lot of really good comments to everybody, which is awesome. Awesome. I'm looking. All right. So if you have a question, unmute yourself. Be brave. You're going to bless me. Hey, Hi, Tracy. Can you hear me? Who is it? Christy? Oh, is someone else talking? Can you hear Christy? Let me find you. Let me make sure I'm talking to the right person. Christy who? Ellsworth. All right, I'm finding you. All right, go for it. Okay, so my question, I can relate a lot to, I just moved to a new area. So um, like when you started out, you said you kind of were starting over. Um, so I've really, I've lived in a really remote area for two years. So during that two years, I've really done a good job at creating a really strong online presence and um, really confident and, you know, really worked on myself a lot for a long time. Um, but what I'm finding now that I'm in an area where I meet people, actually face to face, real people, <laughs> not behind a computer, um, that I tend to, you know, you attract who you are. And the people that I meet are more like who I used to be because they're who I'm comfortable reaching out to. Um, I find myself still intimidated to reach out to, I know that no one's above me, that we're all people. They probably think exactly like I do, but there's still like a barrier when, um, when I, when I, um, picture someone as really confident, you know, I'm intimidated to talk to them. So my question is, like, I'm finding that I'm meeting people that are not necessarily challenging me to be better. And I know it's okay to continue to reach out to those people because I feel like I have a gift to offer them. And I see so many of the problems that I've overcome through isogenics and through bettering myself. But what do you have like a recommendation for you know, finding connections with people that not, I, I don't mean it like better than you, but people that make you want to strive to be better. Is that again, kind of like a numbers thing? Just like the more people you meet, the more likely you're going to find those people or um, what are your thoughts? No, it, it's actually, you're just talking a really, really good game is what you're saying. Um, you're, you're basically saying logically, you understand that we're all the same. Logically, up here, you get that, you know, we all are, you know, we all put our pants on the same way, but your heart doesn't believe that. It really doesn't. You're trying to talk yourself into confidence. You're trying to talk yourself into believing that. 
And I did the same thing. That's the only reason why I can say that to you. Mm -hmm. And so even though your mind is saying one thing, your heart is holding you back from actually talking to somebody like they're a human being. Mm -hmm. Um, and that you have to change Mm -hmm. and you're playing small. You're playing small. You're, you're the three things that will completely, um, keep you from hitting your goals. It is judgment, which you're doing when you look at somebody and size them up and think that they're confident. Cause I mean, a lot of people think I'm, well, I am super confident, but back when I wasn't, people thought I was confident and I wasn't, Mm -hmm. um, justification. You're justifying why you don't talk to those people. Mm -hmm. And maybe even a little jealousy. Maybe you're like, well, they have something I I want, so I don't want to talk to them because I don't want to feel bad about myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you got to get over it. And you know what I would recommend is doing scary things. Go into an environment where you're super uncomfortable by yourself, not with friends. Um, Yes, it's terrifying. Hello, I have to do it too. Um, But not necessarily for the same reasons you are. Um, but I still have to do it. I do. And so even though you're talking a good game, you're not really feeling what you're saying. And so you feel like a hypocrite too, I, I'm sure. And so then you beat yourself up and there's this vicious cycle of beating yourself up. You'll go out and try it. You know, you're not playing big, you're playing small, um, you're logical, but you're not, um, emotional and you're not allowing yourself to be, and it's holding you back. It is. It's holding you back. It's real easy to be brave on Facebook and be even a little vulnerable on Facebook because you don't have to look people in the eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I did do that in the beginning, but I have to show up in the world as I am on Facebook. And I do. Still scary. Yeah, and that's where I think that part of the disconnect comes is, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I know they're true, like you said, but then when I'm face to face with someone and feeling in my heart, yeah, yeah, that you hit it. (laughs) You're going to have to go back, honestly. I mean, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a counselor. However, I've had a lot of experience in this and I'm just letting you know what worked for me. I'm not saying this is the end all be all. My suggestion to you is I'm sure you have dealt with rejection in your childhood, in your adolescent hood that is such a huge pain point in your life that you are carrying that into these decades later. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to go back and let it go, let it go and go back and, and, you know, whatever, I know what I was telling myself as a six and seven year old kid. Mm -hmm. I know what I was telling myself and guess what? I was still saying that at 40 something years old Mm -hmm. and I had to go back, thank my little girl and me for doing what she did, protecting me. But then I had to start talking differently to her about her and to myself. And that takes a lot of work. And it's, again, it still creeps in, but you're going to have to go back to the time in your life where I'm guessing rejection is a huge thing for you where that is coming into play now. Why do you think that, were you, are you a perfectionist? I'm probably gathering you're a type A organized freak. Uh, well, that's kind of a disconnect too, because I, I like want to be a type A. When I, for exa- when I used to work, my spot was spotless. I was super organized because there was a system there. We just moved and you know, my house is kind of a disaster and I'm, it drives me crazy that it's not, I'm, I'm learning to be organized with time. I'm learning to be organized with so many But where things. people can see you, but where people can see you and judge you, you're organized, but in your own little private cocoon, not so much. I was I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. So you're just going to have to, you know, my, the way to kind of get out of it, you know, go out, meet the neighbors. Um, I've been doing that. I've been here 10 months and I didn't really talk to any of my neighbors. I've been doing that. And they're so great. And oh my goodness, I wasted 10 months of not knowing those amazing people, you know, do something kind for somebody and, you know, do something like a situation fun that scares you and do it alone. Be okay doing that. And, and little by little, this will get easier. And you know what? You'll probably really, really enjoy it too. You're going to meet people just like you that are doing it because they're scared and they want to grow in their life, whatever that looks like. So, um, you know, if, if you need counseling, I guarantee it's probably good. I've been in counseling since I was 28 and it wasn't until I was really honest with my counselor four years ago that it really worked. I wasted a lot of people's time and a lot of money. Uh, so if you're willing to be a hundred percent honest, a, a good counselor is awesome too. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Does that help you? 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have a question? Unmute yourself. Hey, Tracy, it's Amy. Hi. Hi. I'm at a dance dance class with my daughter. <laughs> um, but I had a question because... You look pretty, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, like, I like your hair pulled off your face. Thank you. You're Finally, you're showing me. <laughs> you look 10 years younger. Wow. Thanks. Yeah. You look good. I am. Um, I'm in California and I think a lot of my team is probably on this call. So this is going to be hard for me to say, but, um, I am scared. I'm letting my team down in the fact that we used to have a lot of meetings. I used to be more, uh, base doing a lot of things for them basically. And I feel that now I'm starting to build a team here in California and I'm focusing on my new people here to try to develop them. I have helped my people always go to events. As you know, I'm very big on events, um, but I feel like I'm just not as much present. And I feel that this is also what I feel is that I'm gonna let them down. And it's very, very hard for me, yet I'm still learning what I need to do to grow the business. So I'm still doing more of learning about what's going on and then I feel like I'm not doing it. it's hard and then people ask me for a three-way and I freak out I'm like I'm not really the leader and I I don't know it does this even okay make sense? this is an amazing an amazing question and I'm going to tell you something really really good so do you remember when you were doing all that stuff in the beginning and I told you to stop because it isn't duplicatable um you're enabling them listen You've been around, what, two, a little over two years now, right? And so have most of the people that are on this call that are on your team that you're referring to. And you know what? You, the best education, the best way that you can help them is to keep doing the work, meaning enrolling people, getting them paid. You know, you're still, you are present. You're just not present in the same way. You're actually present in a more effective way right now. Believe it or not, I know you don't feel like that, and that is what leaders do. That is what leaders do. They do the work. You know, you were a manager before. You were just like, and if they don't go to events, that's not your fault. That's theirs. It is not your responsibility. You're showing up, aren't you? you you've been busy and you've been all over the world and you are still showing up at events. Yeah. yeah. Right? That is the best way that you are leading them is you're doing the work. You're enrolling people constantly still, even yeah. with it you've got going on and honestly that is the best thing you can continue to do for them because in enabling, enabling them yeah they showed up to events but were they growing themselves as human beings no maybe not I can't answer that for them but what you're doing today is way more duplicatable okay. it's um, you know if they're pissy about it that's on them it's not on you you were just learning in the beginning and that's what you thought you had to do because you thought that's what leaders look like. And quite honestly, that's what a boss looks like. That is what a kindergarten teacher looks like. You are neither of those. You're an entrepreneur. You are a leader. You're a beautiful one at that. Because you are unafraid. Even when it gets scary, you do it anyway. You're a perfect example of that. Because you do have the stinking thinking. You just said, maybe I'm not this, maybe I'm not. But you know what? You keep doing it anyway. And I want you to know what I am seeing in you today is way more of an effective leader for those that are wanting it to follow. The way that you were before would be very hard to duplicate. And it's probably why they didn't. And honestly, because you aren't at their beck and call, I mean, you, yes, you should do a three-way call now and then because yes, you are beautiful and you're amazing and you can keep it short and sweet and to the point. You're a great person to do a three-way call, so please do those because you're awesome. But you don't have to have meetings and, and babysit people. And, you know, if they want it bad enough, they're going to do it. And if they want to blame you for it, that's on them. That's not you. It's not your fault. Because you're still enrolling people and getting them paid and getting to events. Rinse and repeat. You are doing all that. So please don't think you're letting them down. I mean, you probably could be and strive a little bit more. But that's, that's on, honestly the only thing what area I see you maybe not being as present as you were. Um, but that's okay too. I mean, you're figuring it out. You're figuring it out and you're doing a great job. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, we, we, we 
those that have been to events on your team and show up on these calls, they know what they need to do. They know what they need to do. And if they, I mean, Kent was one of them, right? And he, you know, if he's worried about what people think two years later, and Kent, I know we just talked about this, that is nothing that he's going to break through if you're holding a meeting. That is work that Kent has to do. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a beautiful question. I think so many people on the Zoom probably were like, oh my God, thank God somebody answered that. I feel like I'm dropping the ball. They're not. You're not. If you're still enrolling people, you're not. If you're still getting to events, you're not dropping the ball. 80% of your time as a leader is spent talking about isogenics to new people, enrolling, doing very little cleanse coaching, very little, you know, enough to, you know, give them the tools and keep them engaged. Only 20% should be doing recognition, checking in on your teams. Like that, honestly, you, I don't hold meetings. I don't. I hold a Zoom meeting, but that's just the, it's because it's a 90-day game plan. I don't do a lot of special things that, you know, maybe some other leaders are doing that are great and effective. However, I want to stay as duplicatable as possible and keeping it as simple as possible and still be ultra successful. And I've been ultra successful keeping it so super simple and duplicatable. You know, if, if you want to do those meetings, by all means, do them. Um, the chances of your team duplicating that like you have probably are slim. You probably felt that. And honestly, they were probably feeling the pressure that, oh my gosh, one day do I have to do that? Because I don't want to do that. I know when I've sat in meetings before, I'm like, that's awesome for you, but there's no way I want to do that with my life every day. Nor would 90% of my team, I think. And it's totally okay. I mean, they're great. But at the end of the day, doing the things that produce income and doing it every day in the trenches is the best education and the best way to lead. The best way to lead. You are not an employee. You are not a boss. You're an entrepreneur. And entrepreneurs keep doing the work. Keep doing the work. And if, if they have that fire in their belly and they're willing to get through the stuff that they have going on in them that is holding them back, because that is not your responsibility, that is theirs, if they have gotten broken through that, they will duplicate what you're doing today. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Did that answer your question? Yeah, you did. I, I feel right. better. Thank you. Okay. Keep doing it. You're amazing. You're, you're doing amazing. I'm watching you. I know that you've been busy, but you're still doing the work. And that's the best way to lead. Because there's a lot of leaders out there say, do this, do this, do this. And then you know what? They're doing something completely different. Thank you. So you're leading by example, and that's the best kind of leader to be. So keep doing your thing. Thank you. Love you. Love you. It's great to see your face. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> great. Ooh, these are good questions. Anybody else have one? That was really, really good. Thanks, Amy. Got a few minutes still. Got 20 minutes. I can cut this short. You want me to cut it short? Come on. I'll call on you. Okay, I'm going to look and I'm going to start calling on you. How do you like the maples? So if you don't have a question. All right. I'm coming after you. Carolee. Unmute yourself. I knew it. <laughs> you want to hide out? No, I'm good. Okay. What you, what's been going on with you? Because you haven't been around much. I have been hiding out, actually. And um, honestly, this call is perfect because you talked a lot about, um, you know, digging deep and fixing those things that you know are there holding you back. And I feel like this last month, that's what I've been doing, and it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's been rough, but um, sorry, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really trying not to get emotional, but um, it's freeing too. And I feel like I can finally be authentic to my family and to my team. And I feel like I'm reinventing myself, if that makes sense. So yeah, I've kind of been hiding out, but believe me, the wheels are turning and the very authentic and very real me has been coming out and it's been hard for my family to deal with, you know, and it's, I spent the last two weeks um, in Utah with them and it was rough. 
you know, we had some good times and we had some really hard conversations that have been in the background for a really, really long time. And unfortunately they've come out with isogenics, you know, um, it's like you said, people don't want to see you change. And when you're doing personal development, that's uncomfortable for a lot of people because you remind them that they're stuck. And I've been seeing that more and more. And what I did that was wrong in the beginning is I just kind of blocked them out and I did my thing and I had success with isogenics, but I was burying those problems. And um, there's people I don't want to cut out of my life, yet I was doing it because, you know, it was easier than being me and being honest with them. All right. Well, I'm going to challenge you. Although I believe that you are working hard on yourself and I think it's great. I think it's amazing. It's good to hear. I'm going to challenge you to not be hiding out while you're doing that. That is the problem that most people have. They'll do this personal development stuff and they'll wait till they're personally developed before they actually go out into the world kind of messy with it. And that's a pattern for you, right? And it's a pattern that hasn't served you very well. And when you talk about it being hard, you know, people being upset with you being hard, is that harder than the situation that your family is in right now? At the end of the day, I know it's not, you know, because we've talked about it. And so you keep doing what you're doing. You keep working on you. You keep stepping into how amazing and beautiful you are, but you don't need to be hiding out while you're doing it. Because I promise you, as you are messy through that, the people that have been watching you and have been sitting on the sideline waiting for this Carolee to come out will be so excited and you will have their attention right away if you're messy while you're doing it. Just my advice, um, because I do know you very well and I know what holds you back and that you slip back into that from time to time and I don't want that for you. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. No, you don't. You know, I know. I'm really proud of you. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, it was good though. Like I said, it ended on a good note. And I think I was able to get out of that funk that I was in. And, um, you know, and I think when we are learning this and trying to figure out what we're doing, like you said in the beginning, there's a lot of leaders and I, there's so many amazing leaders, but I felt very obligated to do certain things a certain way or to go to all those meetings or to you know, and it was draining. And I think as you're doing personal development and you're, just, you're discovering who you are and you step into your greatness, you have to own it and you have to do it your own way. And I think that's where I'm like, okay, what is my way? What is, what is it that was so exciting in the beginning? How was I having all that success? And I was, you know, it was running in the dark and it was working because I was being me. And so I'm going back to that. It's like I'm starting over and it's, it's kind of nice, you know, just a clean slate and begin again. So thank you. I really appreciate all you do. It is good, and, and I applaud you for that. I think sometimes, um, you know, we have leaders that have success in the beginning, and then all of a sudden they make the decision in their mind that they want to be a leader, and they go into management mode, and they forget what built their business in the beginning, which was talking to new people and rolling them, you know, all those things that we enjoy so much in the beginning, but then we, you know, attend a few extra events or go to a few different meetings or hear 18 different leaders say 18 different things and we like, oh, we're so confused and confused people do nothing and then it's just this vicious circle and then we suck and you know, it's all those things. Never forget what built your business in the beginning and if you haven't built a business yet, you know, the things that you're learning tonight, you know, being you and not being afraid of what people think and being love and light in the world, that is some of the best advice I could give you and stay consistent in that. So, bravo, Carolee. Thank you. All right, I'm calling on somebody. Justine Cruz. Yes, I saw your eyes bug out. Because you're awesome. And you've been around, you've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. And you're super successful in my book. So I want you to know, I want you to know I'm proud of you. Like super proud of you. And mm -hmm. I want to know if you're struggling. I know you were at the event this weekend that we had here in Arizona. And I could tell just by looking at you, some light bulbs went off. Um, maybe if I'm reading you right, mm -hmm. uh, and your energy shifted, I could feel it. Um, so what is it that needed to be shifted that did, or what is something that you learned that maybe you knew, but didn't, or something brand new that you learned?
that you think could not just help you, but all the beautiful people that are going to watch this? Because I think you're amazing. Um, I think what I've been uh, struggling with is um, rank advance, rank advance, rank advance, because you hear other leaders just keep saying, go for it, go for it. And I've been so focused on that that I was losing sight of just being me and being authentic. And um, I had a friend of mine, thank you, Kim Acker, that sat and talked to me and said, stop, you're, you're trying too hard. You need to be what you were before, be you, be authentic, and it will come when it's time. And it finally just flicked and said, you know what, go back to what you used to do. Because um, I was struggling too. I'm hiding. I'm behind Facebook. I'm, you know, I work full time, but that's still no excuse. My success is my success, however bad I want it. So, um, you know, and I just took a step back a bit. And these leaders this weekend were just phenomenal. It was one of the best Super Saturdays I've ever been to. Small, intimate, but I, I was, it was the best I've ever been to. And it just opened up. It just opened my whole mind. I'm so proud of you. And, and I think that that happens a lot. I mean, yes, rank advancing people is really, really important. Um, I think rank advancing people is way more important than rank, rank advancing yourselves. And I think that because we have this pressure or we have, you know, people telling us that, and I get it, like they mean well, they really, really do because they want that for you and they believe in you and they say that and it's, and I get it. However, we do lose sight of what it is and this is loving people and serving people and and truly with no agenda caring about them because when we do when we just stay in that the other stuff comes it really really does so and you are a such a heart-led leader you are and so i'm glad that you got that um what are three things that you learned this weekend that maybe you didn't know in three years in isogenics and you been exposed to me. So I was like, well, I'm sure she got them from Jason and Jessica because you hear me all the time. So um, what were three things, three nuggets, if you can remember uh, that you got out of this weekend from Jessica Johnston, who's a rock star and Jason Liu, who is just unbelievable. Um, I think Jessica, one of the things that stuck out with me, which was odd was that, she said that she doesn't have, you know, she doesn't have a plan that she follows. And I'm like, what? What does that mean? You know, and she sticks herself. And then I thought, that's the same thing. Tracy doesn't have a plan. She just goes by her heart. And, and here you have all these, and I don't go against the tools that Isogenics gives us, but she just said, basically, I don't have a game plan. I just do, I do me. And it just kept re resonating with me and resonating with me. I'm like, do me, do me. Stop trying to be someone, you know, you can definitely follow good leaders, but you don't need to be them. You need to be yourself. Um, that with Jessica Johnston. Um, and then Jason Liu, I thought it was pretty incredible how, you know, he's been in different network marketing and he, the way he talked about isogenics, it just really gave you more value to the company. And he's just, oh my gosh, I could listen to him all day long. He's just incredible. I know. I have goosebumps just listening to you talk. <laughs> because I mean, I, I was blessed enough to like take them to and from the airport, have them in my house. And, and, you know, for somebody that's been in network marketing, as long as he has, he's had some hard things happen that, and you know, I'm going to be, I know he won't mind me sharing this with all of you, but because of those things that have happened in the previous network marketing companies, you know, I challenged him just like I challenged you guys tonight. He has to go back and let go of that stuff. And because those old tapes and those old fears are affecting his isogenic business today. And so even somebody that has been to the top of a company before, because of some stuff, challenging stuff that happened, it is controlling how he proceeds sometimes today. So, um, you know, he's an amazing human being, and I'm so blessed that he was able to come and, and love on all of us. So is there anything else you got, Justine? Because you're amazing. Um, I will tell you one more thing. I, To be honest with you, I had some guests come with me and some other people, and um, I told them all, you know what, I got a dinner thing I got to do tonight, so we're sneaking out at 2.30. And about 2.20, Miss T Tracy gets on the stage, and I'm like, oh, shoot. And then, I, 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 you know, you shared like you've never shared before. So all of you guys were just phenomenal this weekend. It, I truly think it was the best one I've ever been to. Uh, yeah, it was. I don't know how we're ever going to top that. And honestly, um, I don't even know what came out of my mouth, but it was very challenging for me. So thank you for, it was, it was the biggest, hardest thing I've ever done in isogenics to date. So thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad that you didn't bail on me. <laughs> Love your heart. Thanks. 
All right, I, I saw somebody I want to, Abby O'Neill. That's what I want to talk to. This beautiful girl from Maine. I met her, hi gorgeous. I met her in person in March here at a UIA. And I grabbed her, you know, at UIA when you just grab a new person, I just snatched her because I could just feel the energy coming off this girl. Just, I don't know what it was, but I just wanted whatever she had. And I grabbed her and we had a great conversation. And even more, I got to know her and I made a prediction. I was like, this girl is going all the way to the top. And I think you were, what, a two-star at the time. And you're, what, four or five now? Something like that. One ice of derby, welcome home. Um, my prediction is next year you're a President's Quest winner. That's my prediction. So what, I mean, and she's a mom to two little kids. What is Brooklyn and Lucy, they're what, five and three now? Right? Nine and two. Nine and two, okay. I forgot the, uh, the one was older. Um, and you live in Maine with Dylan. Yes. So, and I know that you're very, very, active in all things. Um, you are consistent also. So what would you, what advice would you give to anybody that watches this, the hundred and plus some people that are on this, um, things that you had to overcome, um, old habits and patterns that you had to break in order to take this to the next level, level, because you did it in the summertime, which is usually when it's slow, but you kept pushing on. Yes. So my advice would be to stop questioning everything and anything and to be coachable to the biggest advice that I ever got when I first started was to follow those who have gone first. So I had great mentors early on and I pretty much said, I know that they're successful. I'm going to do what they've done. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I don't need to question everything. I am going to be coachable. I'm going to leave my ego at the door because this business doesn't have room for ego. Mm -hmm. You have your own individual individuality. You can bring that to the table, but you don't have to think you can do anything better than anyone else. So be super coachable and belief. Mm -hmm. Honestly, belief is, that's why UIA hands down was a game changer for my business and meeting you, Tracy, with the whole belief and working with David Wood and understanding that if you don't believe in yourself, in network marketing, in isogenics, that's what you have to go to work on, the belief and understanding that I can do this and I'm going to be bulletproof and it doesn't matter what comes in and who tries to stop me, it doesn't matter. Because my positive energy, my vision, where I'm going is so much greater than anything that anyone can bring up to me right now. And I have hung on to that belief and that confidence and that mindset since day one. And I truly believe that that's, that's why I've had the success I've had. It is. It is. And I'm sure as you became more loud and, and bold with it, more objections and, and more arrows and more SHIT was hitting the fan with that, right? Absolutely. And so, and so when that happened, what kind of thing did you have to tell yourself? Like, okay, like I'm not going that way anymore. Like, did you have to talk to yourself? How did you make the decision? Well, that's irrelevant. That's not true. Or what is, was there something you did or was it just a decision from the get go? I am all the way in and whatever. It was the decision that I was not willing to fail. Failure was not an option. There was no end date. So many people come into this business and they say, I'll give it a shot for a year. I'm all in for two years. For me, when I started, I saw the vision of what this could be for my family and nothing else that I'd ever done was going to change my life and my family's life the way this could. So there was no end. Absolutely without it, there was nothing that was going to stop me. I remember talking to my team early on my dream job used to be a pharmaceuticals rep. When I was graduating from college, I wanted to be a pharma rep. Um, and I said, somebody could come to me today and offer me a dream job with this amazing salary. It would never, ever shake my belief in where I was going with isogenics because nothing could compete with where this was going to bring me and my family time-wise, freedom-wise, and just the personal growth that I've been able to do. Yeah. So it really was... Failure wasn't an option. So every time I hear something negative, it's like, okay. go ahead. You know what? I'm going to the top. You can come with me. I'd love to love on you, support you, bring you with me, but you're not going to stop me. Nothing will. 
that ladies and gentlemen is what you the attitude you have to have and it is the exact one that i had when i made the decision that i was all in a hundred percent that is exactly the attitude you have to have and you know you gotta keep saying it to yourself and you've got to believe that you have to i mean lip service is one thing but i'm sure everybody on this and anybody that will watch this knows that she's freaking telling the truth right now like she's not just saying this is what i say no she believes that with everything she's got and and it's evident and i can't wait to see you again i think you're awesome thank you for showing up tonight from the uia in north carolina i don't know i don't know i'll think about it <laughs> if you guys are all the team. you are yes. i'll think about it Okay. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't ruled it completely out, but cause that's my favorite event. hundred percent. It's the game changer. And I all right. One this. more person I'm going to call on because I think she's the best closer of all time on these things. Lindy, Lindsay Brzezinski, unmute yourself. Thanks again, Abby. I love you, girl. Lindsay. Yikes. I look so scary today, but that is cool. I'm owning it. <laughs> Oh, you're awesome. You are hide out like don't look. <laughs> look at it. she's got her little uh, cycle of growth behind us and everything. Oh, you, you see know. that? Oh, yeah. You look adorable. You be quiet. Okay. So I, I think that um, you are one of the most um, insightful people when because you really sit back and listen to a lot. Um, you had to really, really, really work on belief in all areas. So what do you think they need to hear to close this out tonight? Or what have you learned even in the last week? Because you've learned a lot in the last week. Yeah, I have a couple things actually that have been on my mind. Um, I, I made a post about it. Um, my son had a 16th birthday party. And we had those, has everybody seen those balls that you can get in that are like those bubble balls and you just slam up against each other. It's really, really fun. And so as we were doing cleanup crew, my husband and I wanted to try them out. And I sat on that dadgum field for probably a half an hour trying to do a front flip. And I would run and I would see the line and I would try to flip. And I, I'm not kidding. I was frozen in my tracks absolutely frozen and Brent's looking at me like you know how to do a somersault and I for some reason I couldn't do it and I would go back to the beginning and I'm in this and my arms are so sore I would go I'm in this backpack of a thing and I kept going back and I would run and then just stop every single time and finally I just went back and I, I gave myself a pep talk you know how we always say you have to talk to yourself more than you listen to yourself I think I have to do that more than the average person. I have like this thing that just tries to talk negative to me all day long. So I said, Lindsay Borshinsky, you know how to do a somersault. You are awesome. Do it and close your eyes this time because the only thing holding you back is that you're scared. And so I just ran and I closed my eyes and dad damn it if I didn't just flip easily. And so then I just kept doing it again and I'm like the weirdo running across the field just closing my eyes. And I couldn't help but think how applicable that is to what we're doing here. We are so up in our heads. And oftentimes it's just a matter of closing our eyes and jumping in with blind faith. And I've had to do that since the day I started. And for me, that was really scary. I love a plan. I love to be able to see where I'm going and somebody to tell me it's safe before I do anything. I joke about it, but I grew up a daughter of an FBI. Everything in my life was certain. My entire <laughs> life has been absolutely certain. My dad made sure that our lawn was cut diagonally in two different ways. We never went on like a spontaneous trip. Everything was always planned out. So I didn't do so well with diving into something that I couldn't see. Um, but what a blessing we have. And the second thing that I, I did for me, and I specifically remember it, I was out jogging and I wanted this so bad. I was so scared to walk around with my shaker cup. I was scared to walk around with the shirt. I was scared to do anything. And for what people thought of me, I've had to work on that. This was a couple years ago. This was pretty early on. And one day I just stopped in my tracks. I, <laughs> I was like, that's it, enough. Living this way, not what I wanna do because I saw in five days what I could become. And fighting that every day for like nine months 
was actually 10 times harder than just putting on a shirt, putting on the shaker cup and owning who I am and owning what I want to do. And so I encourage everybody, just if you want this, you keep coming back to events, you keep coming back to calls, you are being called. You want this. And I think it's impossible at this point, once you have a vision of who you can become and you get a taste of personal growth and you start moving in that direction, once you go in that direction, I swear to you, you can't go back. So you may as well just close your eyes and leap because I can't go back. It'll keep me up at night. It's not congruent because that's not who I am anymore. So I don't know. That's all I got for you. That's a good, see, that is why you are the closer. You are so good. And that is very much what we um, are doing in this, this game. We are jumping into uncertainty all the time. And you know what? It's fun when you close your eyes and just jump. So I appreciate you guys all for showing up. Um, I appreciate you all for getting into action as well. Um, I cannot wait <clears throat> to see you next week. Um, I am doing the Susan Sly call before this. So if I'm running a few minutes late, um, that is why. You may want to jump on that too. We're going to talk about social media a little bit, which will be interesting and fun. Um, but I, I applaud all you guys for showing up. I hope that doing the Q&A tonight I think was needed. Um, the voice of everybody and maybe a question you've been afraid to ask. Um, thank you to everybody that was really, really brave and those that added value. Um, it's, it's priceless, priceless what you guys contributed. So I love you all. I can't wait to see you next week. And if we could do one more thing, you guys, it's really, really, really important. Okay. Please, 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 please. This time next week, we should know that the Cubs are going to the World Series. So if you all could say a little prayer for my Cubs. We want to party like it's 1908 again. It's only been 108 years. So if you say a little prayer tonight for my Cubbies that we finish this out sooner than later, that would be great because my plane ticket is already bought to Chicago and I'm going to games three, four, and five. So that is what I needed to end with. Please, that is priority number one. Before you do anything else, you pray for the Cubbies. Okay? Peace out. Love you guys. Have a great night.